doubt that I'm going to piss off the 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds, you know, the AEW marks, the people that think the AEW is something revolutionary. I've made two videos stating the AEW is dying. Last night, we got pretty much the proof, the icing on the cake, as Tony Khan released the footage of CM Punk and uh, <laughs> Jack Perry. And it was exactly what I told you it would be. It made CM Punk look better and AEW look worse, less organized, and like complete dog shit. So I'm ready for your comments, but let's get into it because AEW, once again, part three, is dying. Now listen, I want to make this clear. If you don't pay your own rent, pay your own mortgage, pay your own car note, if you got to write your name on the orange juice in the refrigerator, I don't want to hear your opinion. It really doesn't matter to me. As a 43-year-old man that's been watching wrestling my entire life, the opinions of some 13-year-old that thinks AEW is cool and revolutionary, it doesn't really matter. I get it. The AEW marks are going to come in here. They're going to talk shit. And that's, that's a given. I understand all of that. You're going to throw insults. But at the end of the day, none of that matters because none of you are A, getting vagina, B, getting money, or C, know what the fuck you're talking about. I was here during the days, during the ending, during the demise of ECW, WCW, essentially the NWA. I know NWA is back, but you get my point. The death of the territories. I know when a wrestling company looks like it's dying. And not every wrestling company has the longevity that TNA Impact does, where it's able to somehow stay alive. Now, you may say to yourself, well, hey, Tony Khan's got money, so he'll be able to save it. He's already making budget cuts, isn't he? And if he doesn't get a deal from TNT, from TBS, from whatever that gives him a profit, the truth of this is it's not going to last. We all know this because he's spending like WCW without the ratings. Guys, I'm JB Gunner and this is Heal Nation. Before we get into this story, I want to say thank you to everybody that supports the channel, any of my channels, regardless of platform, regardless of method that you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. For 18 years, I've been doing this on the platform, and it's you guys, the Gun Squad, that's made this a real thing. I got a comment yesterday. I said, you only got 600 subs. I'm like, yeah, this channel's brand new. Wrestling is a side thing for me. I do politics and shit. I've got more, I've got canceled channels with more subs than your favorite wrestling YouTuber. I assure you. Three silver play buttons, bitch. Trust me, I've been here a long, long time. But that's neither here nor there. If you two find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. But let's get into this. Tony Khan, who realized that CM Punk made headlines, WrestleMania was making headlines, he came out and he said, I want to make headlines too. I don't have any big draws other than Edge and Christian, so I think what I'll do is I'll put CM Punk on my programming again and somehow get a draw. No, that's called hot shot. That's you know, maybe that's that's Goldberg versus Hogan on Monday Night Raw. Not even that. <laughs> I can't even believe I said that in the same sentence that I said Goldberg and Hogan. You had a backstage fight that made CM Punk look completely in the right. Then they showed us that everything that CM Punk said was actually the truth. Now, yesterday or the other day, I made a video saying, why on earth would in a wrestling business, would you show someone from another company beating up somebody from your company? I understand that a lot of your fans are social justice warriors and complete pussies. But in the, you got to remember, this is still pro wrestling. We want the tough guy. We want the CM Punk beating up Jack Perry. Not everybody thinks from a smart fan perspective and they're like, yes, but that was technically wrong because you don't assault your fellow employees. Sometimes you do, motherfucker. And in, in the wrestling business, it's putting our face all the time. We got tag team people turning on each other. We got, it's part of the kayfabe. So do you think your average wrestling fan... Do you think your average wrestling fan looks at CM Punk and says, yeah, but that was a shitty employee thing to do. No, 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 no. Because we've been, we've been conditioned to believe people fight their bosses and their fellow employees all the time because that's what the entire goddamn business is, is 
One, one WWE employee fighting another WWE employee. That's the nature of the goddamn business. You think we care if it's backstage or not? They run backstage segments where one employee fights another employee. But that's not real. So what? Your average wrestling fan is only watching it for the entertainment. We don't care if our wrestlers are racist or sexist or homophobic, fuck them. You know what I'm saying? We don't care if none about none of that. Your average human doesn't give two fucks about any of that. We want good stories. We want good wrestling. We want to see CM Punk choke out little Jack Perry, Luke Perry's son. We want to see it. We think it's awesome. But here's the truth about that brawl in. Here's the thing about that entire situation. Tony Khan was scared for his life. He's got to be the biggest pussy on the planet. Let's go ahead and get to this. Let's go ahead and get to this. Let me, let me, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Let's look at this because we're going to talk about what's been going on. We'll start off what there. Happened? We'll start off there. We're going to let CM Punk narrate this, okay? We're going to look at what happened with it between CM Punk and Jack Perry behind the scenes. The big thing that AEW was promoting as they promoted and showed you one person, a star from another company, beating up someone from their company. And they think that's a good idea. Why do you think that if, when they do the Forbidden Door shit, one company typically doesn't want their guy to lose to the other? When WWE lends out Shayna Baszler to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the trash can wrestling, when they, here's the reality, is they don't want the other company to make their star look bad. So Shayna Baszler, yes, WWE allowed her to go work for Josh Barnett, but she had to win. You cannot book my superstars to look like trash. Tony Khan books his own superstars to look like trash and then wanted you to know that some star from another company beat up the star from his company. Well, not even the star, what a, one of the pillars, I guess, right? <laughs> Whatever, man. But anyway, let's, let's go here and I want to show you guys this. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. And all the AEW fans are going to defend this and say, but doesn't CM Punk look so unprofessional? All the people saying it don't make fucking $15 an hour. CM Punk is making no less, no less than three to five million a year. That's, I don't care how unprofessional he is. He looks, his bank account looks extremely professional. Extremely professional. That's the point. This is a business. And what all Tony Khan just did was help the competitors. This is like McDonald's saying, go eat the Whopper. You, you guys are fucking stupid. Let's go ahead and check this out, man. This is, this is, this is beyond. It doesn't get much better than this really at all. <laughs> let's, let's check it out real quick. Let me make sure it's up here big for you guys. Here we go. Those fighting words. I do want to say this though. Dude, putting this out in public is bad for your business. Remember, the Samoa Joe and CM Punk was about to fight for the world title. Sometimes you you <laughs> reveal too much. They're just all back there chilling. By, by all logic, Samoa Joe should have helped Jack Perry if we're going to do the kayfabe thing. <laughs> you, but you just completely expose the business. You don't give a shit. Nobody in AEW gives a shit. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. You know. Well, put him in the guillotine. Choke, bitch, choke him out. Choke him completely the fuck out. Yeah. So that's the moment right there. Tony Khan feared for his life because CM Punk yelled at him. The whole company is bitches, man. They got some real solid dudes there, like Edge, uh, Samoa Joe. But man, come on. Don't get professional. Stop it. I turned to Tony and I said, this place is a fucking joke man all you did was all you just did was make your other company's star look like he can beat up your company's stars and he and he can scare you to death that's good for cm punk I quit most importantly this proves that cm punk was right that he told the truth you see how quick that was you acted like cm punk grabs you and threaten you and rich and, and put your life at risk tony khan <laughs> Come on! 
CM Punk got in his whole ass. That does not make him look bad at all. At all. <laughs> it, it, I'm not, it makes Jack Perry, it may, it, look how easily he got choked out. See, all CM Punk did was push him once and then put him in a guillotine. Man, people do that to their wives and sisters and brothers all the goddamn time. That wasn't shit. That wasn't shit. But it did, it did prove that everything CM Punk says is completely accurate. And so what do you do? You not only air that, you send out Will Ostrich to, 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 to respond to Triple H. Now, what Triple H said was that these new people, and, I, and I'm going to say this and agree with Triple H completely. You new age people, you millennials and Gen Zers don't want to work for anything. It's the truth. You don't respect the grind. You don't know what it takes to be successful, whether it's anywhere in life. What I do for a living, I do for 15, 16 hours a day. Every day. Because that's what it takes to be successful. To be a wrestler, everybody knows. It takes not only working out consistently, not out training, not only training consistently, but traveling and working consistently. Old days were 300 days a year. Triple H's heyday was 300 days a year on the road. What Triple H said about Will Osprey, and, and, and I think in general about a lot of these young kids, is they don't want to work to be successful. Yeah, he'll take Tony Khan's money, but Will Ostr Ostrich will never be a star recognizable by anyone, ever. And he just fucked up his chance of ever going to the WWE. The reality of this whole thing is, that's what you kids want. You think you should work less and still make just the same amount. I sit here with a swimming pool. I sit here with all this and you motherfuckers are like, I should be able to have that too. Yes, you should. If you work as hard as me, you should be able to have the same things that I have. But the problem is, as you're told by Bernie Sanders in the left, that you, can, you should be able to have it without doing as much work. No, no. But let's go ahead and listen. This is another reason why the AEW is dying. Will Ostrich has denied he was afraid of the grind. But uh, he said he took the AEW offer because of scheduling. That means you don't want to grind. It says, yeah, of course I talked to the WWE, but it was night and day, Osprey said, even in differences of what they were offering and what AEW was offering, because nobody knows who you are, Ostrich. Nobody watches Japanese wrestling, dummy. Other than people when they have time to be up all night or find it on pay-per-view and watch Japanese wrestling. AEW was way better. The scheduling, everything about AEW was completely the right option for me. It was always you can go be a superstar, superstar in WWE and be famous, exactly. But it's not, a, it's not as good of pay and it's not as kind of a schedule. That's right. So instead of actually becoming a wrestling star... You chose the easier schedule. And the pay is only that way because nobody knows who you are. Tony Khan has a fetish. He jerks off to New Japan Wrestling every single day. But your average person doesn't know anything about New Japan. He writes that I respect they're doing it, but it's not for me. So that was his comments initially. And then he comes out here, and I want you to understand, Triple H didn't say nothing bad. He just said, man, a lot of these young guys, I'm glad I didn't sign them because they don't have, they don't want to grind. They don't want to grind. So this is what this dickhead said on, Imp or on AEW. Seeing as the guy that said it is only in the position he is in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. By the way, your typical, by the way, your typical American hates fucking accents. I will never listen to a Will Ostr Ostrich promo other than what we're watching right now because I don't want to hear you motherfuckers. 
I don't want to sit here and try to, uh, to try to figure out what the fuck you're saying. And, and that's not anything other than just normalcy bias. And Americans know I'm telling the truth. I don't want to sit here and try to figure out what a Brazilian saying or what a, a British dude is saying because they talk different. I'm sure we talk different to them. I personally don't find foreign people's promos inter interesting at all. And especially British people. They don't sound intimidating. They just don't. Does Will Ostrich sound like, a, like a, an intimidating dude that can win a world title anywhere at anything? No. You're in, in America, if we had a British dude standing in front of our face talking like that, we probably wouldn't even hit him because we'd be laughing so hard trying to figure out what he's saying and trying to decipher the shit talking. And that's, you can say that's racist, you can say that's nationalist, you can say whatever you want to say. Yeah, you'd be a goddamn fool. But the reality of this is, is most people are comfortable with their own kind of people. Americans want to watch American wrestling, not Japanese wrestling. And we don't want to sit here and try to decipher what Will Ostrich is saying every single time he talks. But he just ruined his chances of air going to WWE here. Yeah. In the position he's in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. What a dummy. You are in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my Oh, uh, sure he is. You understand that during Triple H's days, they traveled 300 days a year. You understand under Triple H's current position, he travels like that. You understand that Triple H, even right now, grinds far more than you ever will. Because the only difference between you and Triple H right now is that you go into the ring and do flips currently. I guarantee you Triple H's workout regimen right now. Look at you and look at Triple H. Triple H's workout regimen right now is double or triple what yours is. No question. No doubt in my mind. With the bad heart. The only difference is, as you wrestle once or twice a month and do some flips for 10, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, that's the only difference between your grind now and Triple H's grind, and he's not even in wrestling. But we go back to when Triple H made his name. Trust me. Trust me when I tell you. Tri Triple H was working more days per year than you've had matches in your entire career, probably. It's just the truth. But let's see if we can get his entire promo in here. Because, because this is what Tony Khan does. He sends his, uh, his, 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 his wrestlers out to do the talking for him. As if somehow this is going to somehow make things better. It makes you look worse, Tony. It makes you look worse. Well, no, I think we heard the important part. We don't need to hear the rest, actually, because I don't want him to fucking copyright strike me. But the reality of all of this... Okay, is AEW is doing this because they're having their lowest ratings in years. Just on the 4th of April, AEW Dynamite ties for its lowest ratings in years. You sign Sasha Banks, you sign Ostrich, you sign uh, whatever the fucking other little Jap's name is running around doing flips that you gave a title to immediately. And your ratings suck because nobody knows who what an Ostrich is. 752,000 viewers, 0 0.23 rating. Not even the goddamn kids know what your ostrich is. And then the week before, 747 K. These people are complete. They're like the whole fucking thing, it's, it's falling. It, it's, it's on its way out. And you did this to pop a rating, and I'm afraid I got some bad news. It's not going to work. You can send Mark Henry on camera all day to talk about how he would beat up little Kyrie Sane, and it still doesn't make Mark Henry look tough. At all. So, and we know you're hurting because everybody's leaving and you're even releasing people. That means you realize that your expenditures, that you may be able to spend like Bischoff, but you don't have the ratings that Bischoff had. 
You're not WCW, bro. You're not. Let's take a look at the ratings. Let's take a look at the ratings. Look at the WWE. Let's just take a look at this. Is, what's this, Raw? In April, 1.78 million. 2.36 million. Look at SmackDown. 2.2 million. 2.6 million. Look at NXT. Okay. Zero. They had 640,000, 640,000. NXT is the third brand, the developmental brand. Now let's look at Dynamite. 747,752,000. Raw and SmackDown doubles and triples what you do. And you're barely, barely above NXT. Your collision program only gets 463,000 views. 267,000 views for Rampage. Bro. Those were nowhere near Nitro numbers. Nowhere near Thunder numbers. And that company is dead. And before you sit here and say I'm a WWE shield, no, I loved and still love Impact. I loved and still love WCW. I loved and still love NWA. I love those companies. I, I'm not at all. I loved and love ECW. But AEW is ran by a clown. A clown. That, and like, like Jim Cornette says, he just wants his action figures. And he's got this fetish for the Japanese culture. Whatever, man. But at the end of the day, AEW is dying and it will continue to die. Because of decisions like this, no leadership and no stories. They had so little leadership, so little to actually sell a pay-per-view on, they had to bring back CM Punk. Even if it meant CM Punk choking out one of their own people. AEW is dying, and it will continue to die. And that's going to hurt a lot of your feelings, but it's the truth. WWE is going up, up, up through the roof. AEW is in its during doing its death roll right now. Showing you. CM Punk choking out their star and Osprey ruining his entire career by saying what he said about Triple H. Good way to run a business, guys. I'll be here waiting for it to end. Not, not because I wanted to, just so I can say told you so. Nobody knows what the fucking ostrich is.